Under the Radar Firefly Aerospace with its really low track record in launches is about to ramp up its launches. Today there was an announcement that I think went under the radar about Firefly choosing Wallops Mars facility to launch its Alpha rockets in addition to Vandenberg. This is something that caught my eye because I was like, Firefly's barely launched anything. Why in the world is it choosing a second launch facility? Because it has so much in its pipeline and there are strategic advantages to choosing not just a second launch site, but this particular launch site for Firefly. I'm Laura Forsick. I am the executive director of space consulting firm Astrolytical. We really track the launch industry and particularly focus on emerging launch systems and spaceports. First, you have to understand that this announcement today by Firefly was not a surprise because Firefly was already planning to launch at Wallops with two other launch vehicles. The Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport, that's Mars, that's at Wallops Island, Virginia, already hosts two launch service providers. Historically, it's launched more. But for right now, it launches with Northrop Grumman and it launches with Rocket Lab. The idea is that there's so much potential to launch from Wallops, but very few launches actually happening. Firefly has an announcement in place already for about now two years or so that they are working with Northrop Grumman, which is already operational at Wallops. And the reason why they're working with Northrop Grumman first is started with Antares. And if you remember, Antares currently operates with Russian uh, engines. And with the war in Ukraine, we have really gone away, we being the United States and the Western world, have really gone away from using Russian technology in our rockets and our launch vehicles. Northrop Grumman said we need to transition our Antares rocket to become domestic. So they are going to be using Firefly engines, the Miranda engines. So that was the start of that partnership, but then they decided to work together to build, uh, co-build a medium launch vehicle, MLV. So both Firefly and Northrop Grumman are going to be launching the MLV from Wallops. And that was announced, like I said, two years ago or so. So it's not terribly surprising the announcement today that Firefly is going to be launching its Alpha rocket, which is its existing rocket from Wallops in addition to Vandenberg. Alpha has not had the best track record so far. So far it's had failures, partial successes, and one complete success. And it's that one complete success that I want you to pay attention to. Back in September of last year, it launched its Victus Knox mission for the Department of Defense. And that is a rapid launch mission where a launch service provider, Firefly and a few others are working on this. They want to be able to rapidly launch. So the Department of Defense comes to a launch service provider and says, we want you to launch this ASAP. And the idea is within 24 hours, that, that thing is going to be in space. Very, very different from how space currently operates, where sometimes it can take months to years for a payload to get to space. So that mission back in September, that was successful, even though it took like 27 hours, still pretty impressive. The idea is that these launch service providers that wanna do this rapid launch, they wanna have the flexibility of a launch site as well, mainly for things like weather and logistics. You can see at Cape Canaveral especially, but also at other launch sites around the United States, how much weather affects the launch schedule. Um, it's, it's actually the number one reason for a scrub that is a delay in launch because of weather. Um, logistics is getting to be number two, especially down in Cape Canaveral. Cape Canaveral is a hugely successful launch site and therefore, and when I say Cape Canaveral, I mean Cape Canaveral Spaceport Station as well as Kennedy Space Center. It's called Cape Canaveral Spaceport. That's the whole thing. It is the number one site for launches in the world, mainly due to SpaceX. Uh, so their logistics of launching at Cape Canaveral there's a lot of people who want to launch, a lot of launch vehicles, a lot of balancing the range and, and launch requirements of, you know, clearing the airspace, clearing the, the ocean space, the ocean space, is that a term? You know, clear, clearing, making sure everything is safe and ready to launch. So you want to have a less congested launch site if you're going to be launching rapidly. But I also said that Firefly is getting ready for a launch boom. And that is because back at the beginning of June, just a few weeks ago, there was an announcement made that Lockheed Martin bulk bought 25 alpha launches from Firefly. Lockheed Martin had already worked with Firefly to launch a mission back in December last year. That was the partial success. So it was a, a fully uh, successful launch until it got to a certain point and then it got to the wrong orbit. I think a second stage, something happened and it got to the wrong orbit and therefore the 
payload was uh, not quite in the right place and deorbited early. Uh, so even though there was that only partial success of that launch, uh, Lockheed Martin decided that they still want to work with Firefly. And so they went ahead and bought 25 launches of Alpha. And you have to understand that there's actually a massive supply, uh, there's actually a massive demand and over demand for launches right now. Because ever since the war in Ukraine, that's really cut off launches from Russia. So the Western world, the United States is not launching anything from Russia except astronauts to the National Space Station. That's another video, another story. Uh, but in terms of Lockheed Martin payloads, you know, Department of Defense payloads, they're not going to Russia. Um, there is a, a lack of launches from Europe, unfortunately. Um, Ariane 6 is about to have its first maiden launch. The Vega has been on like on pause. Um, there's just not a whole lot of launches outside of the United States. And then within the United States, you've got, of course, Falcon 9, which is the workhorse of the world. A lot of those Falcon 9 launches are uh, Starlink launches, but of course there's opportunity for another payload. For example, Firefly is actually launching its Blue Ghost mission to the moon on a Falcon 9. Uh, they're aiming for November of this year. Uh, and so you really don't have a whole lot of choice. You really have Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy. Uh, Starship is not yet ready. Vulcan is, um, you know, overbooked. <laughs> In fact, even though Lockheed Martin is a partial owner of United Launch Alliance, Lockheed Martin and Boeing co-own United Launch Alliance, ULA. Uh, ULA is so booked up right now. They are so overscheduled and behind with their, their um, Vulcan launches. And it's not entirely their fault. I mean, Blue Origin was the uh, reason why they were delayed in their initial Vulcan launch. But the point is that there's no rides right now through ULA, even though Lockheed Martin is a, an owner, a co-owner of ULA. Now, there is the idea, the uh, rumor that ULA might be sold. <laughs> and um, therefore Lockheed Martin might not be the uh, co-owner of ULA in the future. Don't know how that's gonna play out. That's just a rumor at this point. But it is interesting that Lockheed Martin did not go with ULA, probably just because of capacity. There's no launches available for um, Vulcan or for the remaining atlases. Similarly, Rocket Lab is getting bought up. Uh, I mean, the Rocket, launch, uh, Rocket Lab launches are getting bought up. Uh, like, there's just so little capacity right now in terms of launch. That there needs to be more launch activity, which is a funny thing to say because a few years ago, I did a report for a client where he, I said there's over a hundred launch service providers globally that are trying to build new launch vehicles. And, you know, realistically only this segment is going to succeed eventually, but <laughs> Um, there's not there's not a whole lot of demand for all of these launches every you know hundred and some hundred and thirteen however many there were at the time I did that report and now we're seeing actually there's there's a heavy demand for launching things into space right now Rocket Lab just got their own bulk buy but Lockheed Martin chose Firefly and they're not the only ones so L3 Harris also has uh, three launches booked with Firefly. And there's a few others. So of course the Department of Defense, they're gonna keep wanting to do that 24 hour rapid launch. Uh, that's not something that's a one and done. That is a capability that they want to develop and they wanna develop it with not just Firefly, but other ones. But you know, Firefly is I think the first one to succeed with that rapid launch, succeed 27 hours, uh, you know, so mostly succeed. Um, so that is not something that they wanna let go of. They wanna continue to mature that capability to be able to do rapid launch. So it makes total sense, even though the track record of Alpha, the track record of Firefly is not great at this time, that they're looking ahead, that they're saying, we're going to need another launch site other than Vandenberg. Now, it did take Rocket Lab about four years from choosing Wallops to actually launching their first rocket from Wallops. They had a lot of things <laughs> pop up, a lot of things that delayed them. I think there were lessons learned there, so I don't think it's going to take Firefly four years to ramp up operations at Wallops, especially since they've already been working with Northrop Grumman to uh, prepare to launch the MLV, the medium launch vehicle, from Wallops. So I don't think it's going to take them four years, but I do think it takes time. It's probably going to take them at least a year to prepare to launch from Wallops. So even though they still need to ramp up operations with Alpha, they are looking ahead to see what their pipeline is, how they're gonna get their, their payloads into space and, and satisfy their customers. I'm excited for Firefly. If you remember back in the history of Firefly, it started 
10 years ago with Firefly Space Systems that went bankrupt and kind of rose from the ashes like a phoenix to become Firefly Aerospace. Uh, so I'm really excited to see them finally flourish and become the launch service provider that we all want them to be.